Hey everyone, I'm Michael, this is Alice, and today we're gonna to be showing you some tips and tricks on how to find local fishing spots using tools like the internet and social media. So let's go. Oh, there's a bite. All right, so when you start your search looking for local fishing spots, uh, the first place I would suggest to go is Google.com. And not necessarily Google Maps, but Google.com. And the reason that it is, is Google allows you to put in these keywords like fishing spots near me, or your city and then fishing spots. And what that brings up are blog articles. And those blog articles are super helpful in finding fishing spots that you may not hear about otherwise, because they'll you'll have local bloggers and even like hikers or bird watchers or anybody along those lines um, that are writing articles about your local area and then local fishing spots. And they may be talking about trails that they're walking on or you know spots to, to bird watch, but in those articles, you're also gonna find tidbits of um, information about actual lakes or ponds or fishing spots that are actually around their area. So definitely go check out Google first before you head to Google Maps. Okay, so the obvious one that everyone knows about is Google Maps. Uh, my only suggestion about Google Maps is when you actually get onto Google Maps, I would suggest that you flip it to kind of the flat view, the non-satellite view. Um, what that's gonna do is gonna create more contrast between the water and the actual terrain that you're looking around. So obviously scan around your area, um, look for those blue pockets of water. Um, and then at that point in time, I would suggest flipping back to the satellite view. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna show you access points and trails that circle around the actual pond um, and give you an idea of how to actually access that water. And if you zoom in real close, you might be able to see some actual fishermen fishing along the banks uh, in certain spots. And that's gonna give you a better idea of where you can access that water and actually where the fish might be. So definitely make sure to check out Google Maps. All right, the other website or app that I will recommend that probably everybody knows about is YouTube. Um, and you can use the same techniques that you did on Google on YouTube by typing in search terms like your city and then fishing spots or your city and fishing. Um, what's gonna come up are local vloggers that are fishing in your area and recording where they're fishing. And so obviously if you click through those videos, you can kind of see where they're at, see those fishing spots. Um, if you can recognize the terrain, you can kind of spot um, where those fishing spots might be. In addition to that, uh, some information will probably be in the video title um, and definitely some more information may be in the video description. But I think the key nuggets of information are gonna come from the comments in that actual YouTube video. Cause a lot of times, you know, vloggers may not give you like the full scope of where they're fishing at just cause obviously as anglers, we're trying to hide our fishing spots uh, for the most part, at least the good ones. Um, so if you pop down into the comments, um, that's where you'll get people other people commenting on that video saying, oh, like I caught like five fish at X Lake the other day, or, oh, I know that spot, it's by so-and-so. So kind of getting that information from the actual commenters, not necessarily the uh, YouTube vlogger, um, is a good way to find information on, on fishing spots as well. Um, so scan through the video, uh, look at the title, look at the description, watch the actual video, uh, but definitely check out the comments, and that's where you're gonna find the true nuggets of information. So one resource that gets often overlooked is visiting your local tackle shop. Um, so get out there, visit your local tackle shop, talk to the employees, and oftentimes there may be guides, local guides that work there as well. Um, those guys are super knowledgeable about fishing and more importantly, super knowledgeable about fishing in your local area. Um, obviously they're gonna know the big lakes, but they may know some of the small ponds that are kind of in the, er in the area too, where um, bank anglers kind of go. Um, so they give you some good tips and tricks on that. Uh, in addition to that, you know, they may be able to tell you kind of the access points within those uh, smaller ponds, um, like saying, oh, like you should go down this street or this street to actually access the pond or, you know, you can't fish it at certain times uh, during the day because it's privately owned, but the owner doesn't really care uh, during these times, things along those lines, like information that's just kind of like local to them that like there's no way you could find that information anywhere else besides just talking to somebody locally. Um, granted, those guys are not going to give away their honey hole, uh, but they're definitely going to give you a good head start on where to look for fishing spots in your area. So definitely don't skip on your local tackle shop. Uh, pop in there, ask those guys, and they are more than likely to help you out. So let's talk about Facebook, Instagram, and fishing apps. 
Facebook, more specifically Facebook groups, has become a lot more popular lately with hobbyists that are looking for other people with their interests that want to talk about it. Um, and as you know, anglers like to brag, so of course there's Facebook groups for anglers out there. Um, I live in Northern California, NorCal, so when I wanted to look for Facebook groups for anglers in my area, I looked up keywords like NorCal fishing, NorCal anglers, and I'm a part of maybe like five to six groups now that are just treasure troves of information um, that help me find fishing spots. Um, you can even use um, the search bar within the group if you're looking for more specific information. For instance, if I were to go into the group search bar and I was looking for places to launch out of Lake Berryessa, I would type in Lake Berryessa launch and it would pull up all the historical posts of when someone mentioned this. Um, and I can kind of snoop around, go through the pictures, go through the comments, see if there's any questions that I might have that were answered. Um, and then I can even reach out to the original poster um, and see if they're willing to share more information too. Instagram. So using Instagram's hashtag and location features, um, I can actually narrow down a lot of information about bodies of water in my area. So again, I live in Northern California. So if I look up the hashtags NorCal Fishing, NorCal Fishing Report, a bunch of posts come up um, and I can even sort them by most recent. Um, and so I can go and look through the pictures, look through the comments again to see if there's any questions I might have had that were answered. I can go find profiles of other local anglers and I can go see their historical um, postings as well and see if there's any information there. And I can even talk to them if I'm in the mood and see what they're willing to share too. Fishing apps. So if you haven't gone through your phone's app store and looked up fishing apps, you should definitely give them a shot. For the most part, they're free and they're pretty fun to use. Um, some that I can think of off top that I've used are Fishbrain and Angler. Um, and they're pretty cool because they use, uh, they have a map feature that you can use to find bodies of water in your area. Um, and you can go see if they're fishable. Some of them even have features that show other anglers catches and you can post your own catches. You can talk to other anglers, um, swap tips and tricks about how to get to these spots. There's a lot of information there. So if you haven't looked up fishing apps on your phone, be sure to give it a shot. All right, so when you've actually found your fishing spot, um, you're gonna wanna gear up with some rods and reels. And I would suggest packing as light as possible. Um, you're gonna be walking around, you're gonna be traveling the bank, you're gonna be fishing um, areas and walking a lot. So you definitely don't wanna carry like six rods with you like I have here on my kayak. Um, when you're out there, I would suggest two rods. I would suggest a all around combo, uh, bait casting or a spinning uh, combo is totally fine. Uh, but then I would also suggest a light combo. Um, and then if you're getting real fancy, uh, and if your fishery uh, is good for frogging or punching, I would suggest bringing one more combo that's a little bit heavier uh, for frogging and for punching. And I'm gonna show you which two all around, or which all around and which finesse that I use. All right, so here's the finesse setup that I use. It's a Luz Custom Pro speed stick, um, paired up with a Luz Custom Pro spinning reel. Um, this one is a 2000 size. Um, this one, I think 2000 just all around is kind of a good size. 2000 or 2500 works really well. Um, and I have it paired up on this rod here, which is a seven foot medium power fast action rod. And the reason I go seven foot is you want as little rod as possible um, when you're walking around bank angling because that's just less rod for you to get stuck on stuff. Because as you bank anglers know, you're walking around, you're ducking under trees, you're ducking under bushes, um, you know, jumping over stumps, the last thing you want is like this seven foot six or seven foot 10 rod um, that you have to maneuver around all those different pieces of nature uh, to get around it. So this is what I suggest. Um, on here, you can throw anything from uh, this little rage swimmer um, to a shaky head, to a drop shot, um, to a Ned rig. Um, and that kind of covers your basis for pretty much all those finesse style techniques. So don't forget your finesse rod and reel combo when you're heading out on the bank. All right, so the other rod and reel combo I would bring is the all around. And all around for me, uh, this is the one that I usually bring. Again, it's a Luz Custom Pro Speed Stick. It is a 7.3 medium heavy uh, fast action rod, and that's paired with a Luz Custom Light reel. Uh, this is a, what is this, a 7.5 to 1 reel. Uh, just around the seven gear ratio is kind of like an all around that I kind of like to use. Six is a little too slow, kind of use it for cranking. Eight's a little too fast for me. Um, so I think a seven gear ratio is good for you. Um, and I use this custom light because it's literally the lightest reel on the market, I think. Um, it's easy to carry around, like I said earlier, with the finesse fishing. Um, you're walking through, you're bank angling, so you're walking through a lot of stuff. So you want to carry as light as possible. So this loose custom light, it's crazy light. You'd be, if you don't own one, like definitely pick one up. You 
you can't imagine how light this thing is. It's almost so light that sometimes it feels like a toy, which is kind of weird. But once you get used to it, um, it's it's gonna it's gonna be something that you'll you'll always pick up and it'll always be uh, part of your part of your arsenal uh, when you start using it. So um, this one, medium heavy, fast action. I mean, I think in general that's kind of the all around rod. Uh, you'll find a medium heavy, fast action rod. Um, in pretty much all your sporting goods stores. And the reason for that is you can kind of do everything with it. Um, here, I have a Senko on here. I like throwing Senkos on bait casters, uh, but I could also throw, you know, flukes. Um, you know, I could throw some, some square bills, things along those lines. Pretty much covers all the other bases that your finesse uh, setup doesn't cover. So definitely carry all around. This is the one I have, um, but obviously you can find your own and one that fits for you. All right, that's all we got. Hope you enjoyed. Thanks for watching us share our tips and tricks and hope you learned something new. Now get out there and go fish. Later.